Thank you so much for joining us for another in our series of story to tell. Today we have with us my brother Dominic Reynolds and he'll be sharing his journey with us. Um, if he looks young, he is actually young, all right? So sometimes we have to hear the perspective of the young people as well. Oh, yeah. um, their journey is, is continuing, it's a progressing journey, mm -hmm. but some persons still have a lot to share. Um, irregardless of their age. So Dominic is going to share some of his experiences with us. Oh. Bro, good to have you. Good oh, to have you. Let's nice get straight nice into be it because we have a lot to cover in such a short space of time. Yeah. All right. So tell us about your early years. Um, somebody might look at you and say, um, you're a white man, <laughs> but you're not a white man. No, you're no. actually born in Jamaica. Yes, yes. All right, so tell us where were you born and the year and your, your parents' name and yeah. everything. I was born in 1990, mm -hmm. at University of the West Indies, mm -hmm. um, on a Saturday, I believe, mm -hmm. to Angela Reynolds and Michael Reynolds. Mm -hmm. um, lived in Mona, so that was probably like a short drive for her mm -hmm. to go to UE to give birth. But um, yeah, I was born, born in... Um, Born at University of West Indies. Mm -hmm. I know you have another brother. Yeah. He's older than what's his name? So I have Jason. I mm -hmm. have two brothers. Mm -hmm. One is Miguel mm -hmm. on my father's side. Mm -hmm. And then um and then Jason who is was is good friends with you. Yes. Went, yes. went to Walman Street. We yes. did I remember countless, countless, countless years <laughs> Bible stuff. Well not it was a uh, Bible quiz. Bible quiz. That, that, yes. Uh, and Lestine would come over to the house. Yes. Andrew, Kevin. Yeah, the list goes on. And all of those guys. Yeah. Precious memories. Precious memories. So you are the last one now for yeah. mommy and daddy. Yeah, I'm the last one. So what school you went to seeing that you were born in? You went to a close yeah. by school and yeah. thing? So mm -hmm. I went to Mona Prep. Mm -hmm. um, I went to Mona Prep and probably up until grade four. Mm -hmm. Looking back at it, I, I used to get really sick mm -hmm. the first day of school. And I think I was like really anxious. Mm -hmm. But looking back at it, you know, when we were younger, they never had... Um, somebody to diagnose yes. you and say, you know, mm -hmm. but looking back at it, it was like panic attacks. Yes. So I did grade kindergarten to about grade six, mm -hmm. grade six, because I had developmental issues in terms of just learning. So it would mm -hmm. take you like two minutes to write a paragraph would take me about 15 to 20 minutes mm -hmm. when I was younger. Mm -hmm. My mom decided me to decide to switch me to learning center, mm -hmm. which was more smaller classes mm -hmm. dedicated to helping children learn better. Specialize attention. Specialize, yeah, because mm -hmm. like it was, you know, it went down from the class, class size went down from, at Mona Prep, it was like, what, 20, 30 children, mm -hmm. and then went down to like five, six children. Yes. So then I went there grade six. They, I didn't do my GSAT right away. Mm -hmm. I, they made me do another year of grade six because mm -hmm. I was transferred in grade six and then I did the GSAT. Okay. Yeah. So at that time, you know, you had um, those learning challenges at the time or? Like, to be honest with you, when I was younger, yeah, I probably didn't really understand it. Yeah. I just. You just know said something's yeah. more difficult. Exactly. Than, yeah. yeah. Like when you would do maths, you're yeah. like, yo, like, why, why am I not, why am I not getting it? You know? Yeah. But like really and truly, um, yeah, I never, I never really noticed it until I got to high school mm -hmm. where I'm just like, you know, like, but in, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll say it more, but yeah. But back then I didn't really, re didn't really understand it at first, mm -hmm. but when I got a little older and mm -hmm. I was in high school and I was like, you know what, I, st I think I need some extra time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So move on to high school now, what high school you went to and tell us so about yeah, that so time. I did my GSAT, got into Prairie, mm -hmm. my mother now. Like she always says it, but my mom decided to switch me to Covenant. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that was some interesting three years. <laughs> I'll tell you that. There's a school for rejects. I oh heard, my God. I heard Russian the other day, Russian, the mm -hmm. producer, he's Tariq. I used yes. to go school with him and then some other people, but it was for the school was for rich people, the, mm -hmm. the rich society of Jamaica. So like everybody from, from Tony Rebelson yes. to. You know, Byron Lee and the Jaganers, then yeah. children was there. And then so like, but I did grade seven to grade nine. I remember grade seven was a class of three people, mm -hmm. like me and Melissa. And I think his name was Sean. Mm -hmm. And then it just started to balloon. It started to get, the school started to get pop popular. Mm -hmm. um, but certain things they did, I didn't agree with. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they used to cane people. Yes. They used to 
They deal with corporal punishment. Yes, that is outlawed now. Yeah. For the record, that's yeah. not outlawed by the Ministry of Education. Yeah, so. But you mentioned a school for rejects. Why did you say that? So it's, looking back at it, it's like a lot of people that went to the school got kicked out of their oh, original oh. high schools. Oh, so it's like so a last resort exactly for them. Exactly, it's a last resort. But for me, yeah. it was just my mom at the time. Mm -hmm. She thought it was very, like, she thought it was, she was being cautious. And mm -hmm. she's like, you know what? Let's say let's send him there, uh -huh. but you know she she did tell me there a couple a couple more years. I mean, a couple years ago, she's uh -huh. like, yeah, she regretted it. So like, I would say like about grade nine, um, my last year before I went to Canada, I was I got in trouble and it was just the being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. I was one of the accomplice uh -huh. in a situation. Yes, um, and they had this big meeting. Uh -huh. and my mother went there, and I remember I can't I can't forget it. My mother said she, she pulled me and she's like, get yourself, get yourself. Yeah. And she pulled me from the school and literally, yeah, that, that grade nine. And I feel like because she knew that we already got through to go to Canada. Yes. She was like, yeah, you're not going back to that school. Yeah. So, so she like, just called it, call it, call it a day. She just called it a day. And then we, I remember we, it, the school was up in Stone Hill, mm -hmm. driving, to, driving down. And my mom, I never see her so angry in her life. But she was just vexed. <laughs> and then from there, I just started to do homeschooling. But yes. because I was doing homeschooling, there was like, it wasn't an everyday thing. Mm -hmm. So like I would go down to UPC head office mm -hmm. and Auntie Yvonne used to teach yeah. me English. That's Yvonne and Stewart. Yvonne Stewart, yeah. yeah. And then um, Paul McHugh used to teach me Max. Mm -hmm. Used to go come up to the house. So yeah, there was like, it was a couple, I think it was about a, probably about a year before mm -hmm. I did homeschooling for mm -hmm. the, the, the grade nine. Yeah. So you remember um, any of your friends back at um, Covenant? Covenant, jeez. Um, Are there any good friends there? Are you just yeah, like general speak? General, yeah, yeah, general. Like I, I really personally wanted to go to Meadowbrook because mm -hmm. you know the people that I remembered was from Mona Prep. Mm -hmm. That some of them went to um, Meadowbrook. So like my good friend Matthew Mitchell, mm -hmm. who were in his house, and mm -hmm. then you had Nicole Reed, you had Chelsea. Yeah, a bunch of people that still connected to this day. Mm -hmm. And some of them came to Canada for university mm -hmm. and we link up said way. So, but yeah, Covenant was a blip in the memory that <laughs> I have taken away out of my head. So, but it helped to build who you are yeah, today. I, I facts, must, facts, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, you know what? Growing up in Uptown and then also going to Walman Street mm -hmm. helped me realize and cherish life. Yeah. Because I saw people that didn't have yeah. you know, the, a much, but then I saw people with much. Much. You yeah, so you mean? got the proper balance. So I got the proper balance. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, a majority of my family live up in Cherry Gardens and um, Waterworks, Orange mm -hmm. Grove. Mm -hmm. And so like, but when I would go to church and I would meet other friends of mm -hmm. mine, go over to their house, you know, it helps you to appreciate life. Yeah and help you to be thankful for yeah, what you have. Keep you know? your level headed yeah, as exactly, well. Exactly. So were there any extracurricular activities that you yeah. were doing in school and stuff? Yeah man. So mm -hmm. at the start there was um there was drumming. Mm -hmm. And I got into drumming at the age of seven. Mm -hmm. Um and I would play for Mona Prep drumming would would compete at JCDC uh -huh. and we won a lot of medals, medals yeah. yeah and mm -hmm. my teacher was Mrs. Erskine and it was group drumming so uh -huh. like it was more like you know dealing with the the African ancestry uh -huh. and focusing on that playing different types of rhythms to uh -huh. make it one rhythm uh -huh. coming together and then when I left uh, Mona Prep I wasn't a part of the the drumming anymore but she made me she included me. Yes. So we, I still played at gra the graduation ceremony. Mm -hmm. um, she still made me compete by myself. Mm -hmm. Up to this day, I was. I remember that day competing, competing at JCDC. You're going up against like, um, there's the Kumina place down at Nannyville. Mm -hmm. Those drummers, like you're going Ashe, up against yeah, Ashe, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and you're going up against like Kings, like KC guys. That was mm -hmm. wicked. Mm -hmm. And I remember just going there, playing my drum with with my djembe. Mm -hmm at the time and winning silver and bronze and gold uh, bear medals up to this day i think either my mom or verona have the medals mm -hmm. yeah. and when you said drumming um for the for the audience out there is it the regular drum that you use with the stick no. or so it was it's congas congas kete mm -hmm. uh djembe like mm -hmm. the different types of I would say the, the conga family, mm -hmm. the different types of drumming. So you have high, you have low, you have the bass drum. Mm -hmm. So like in Jamaica, that's the, the focus is around 
the ancestry, the mm. Rastafaris, and you're like yeah. just playing the down dig or Lee or he's playing like Rasta rhythm. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. So yeah, so that's that that's what we focused on. But like she made she made sure Mrs. Erskine made sure that I was always included. Mm -hmm. I guess she saw that I had talent. Mm -hmm. Um and then I remember like up to this day, going on Saturdays, mm -hmm. my grandma would force me. To go to rehearsal, mm -hmm. to force me to go to drumming with, mm -hmm. with, with at Peter and Paul, and I remember it like. But now that yeah. I'm playing, yeah, I'm thankful. You're thankful I'm like, for, for oh, those days. Oh, I'm thankful for those days where Grandma would be like, "You're going to practice." Yeah, and I'm like, "But it's a Saturday. Yeah, I want Bible class." Yeah, yeah. That's so. what I realize. As young persons, um, we don't normally recognize the the the, the benefit yeah. of going to some of these things that yeah. our parents and family advocate for us to do. But yeah. once we get older, we never Bro, forget. Never forget it. Never forget never it. Never forget it. So I always, I, like, I'm indebted to her, indebted to Dennis Rushton. Mm -hmm. I played with Dennis Rushton and friends mm -hmm. when I was like seven, mm -hmm. and I remember he had like these two red LP congas mm -hmm. at the, at the drum at the um at the house. Mm -hmm. So he lived in the flat, and one day he just came over and i remember back in the day he used to do some things like he just he just saw hang out and mm -hmm. and and, and stuff vibe. and one of one of it was music and yeah. dennis being who he is an amazing pian pianist mm -hmm. an amazing musician and just uh like his brain is probably stupid in my opinion you know but <laughs> out of he, this world out of this world yeah, so yeah. i remember he asked me to play for dennis Rushton and friends mm -hmm. and i still have the picture up to today with dale brown in the back mm -hmm. playing bass mm -hmm. um and that was like that was a big concert that yeah, he, that he had and, thing. and then he would ask me to come and play with him a couple of shows i remember playing with him at swallowfield mm -hmm. um but that was the big one mm -hmm. for me uh, and i was only seven okay yeah. so Pearson saw your talent from then and nurtured yeah. it and everything. Right. So you said you migrated um, soon after um, Covenant. Yeah. Tell us about that change of environment and where you went and everything. Yeah, so it was 2004, mm -hmm. migrated to Canada, mm -hmm. migrated to Toronto slash the greater Toronto area. Mm -hmm. um, and those, the first couple of years of migrating was hard, man. Mm -hmm. I remember it used to snow like no tomorrow. Them not really, it not really snow now. Yeah. Like, I think global warming take over. <laughs> but I remember seeing mounds of snow trying to catch the bus. Yeah. And I'm like, contemplating life. I'm like, bro, why my mother yeah, send me coming? I ain't not like used that. to this. Yeah. yeah. So we used to live in, in Thornhill, lived with my, my grand aunt, but mm -hmm. I call her my grandma. She, mm -hmm. She's still alive. Um, but I lived with my grand aunt and Uncle Patrick, Auntie Jean, and we lived in the basement for the first couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, I remember like it was, yeah, it was, it, it was different, mm -hmm. different than than Jamaica altogether. But mm -hmm. it was the first couple of years was hard. Mm -hmm. I remember when my mother had to go back to university, university, and dad had to go back, and it was just me and Jason, mm -hmm. and me and him look at each other and was like, "Yo, yeah, we don't have friends, mm -hmm. so we, but we have each other." Yeah. So until from then till now, me and me and Jason Reds is super close, and that's like, your brother. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's my brother. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you went over there, did you continue schooling or what school yeah. you went to? Yeah. So I went to high school, went to Thornley. I did all my years at Thornley. Um, some amazing teachers, mm -hmm. um, some amazing people all together. Mm -hmm. They made me realize that, yeah, like, you know, you might need some extra time. So even when I went through college as well, um, for a little bit, I actually dropped out of college, but did high school from nine. That's another story. Yeah, <laughs> another story. So from nine, grade nine to, to 12, mm -hmm. um, I did, I did, uh, did, did high school at Thornley, mm -hmm. um, did everything from drama to music mm -hmm. and they helped, they had an orchestra, a really good orchestra, mm -hmm. but I couldn't read, uh, music. The music yeah. So I had the conductor literally said, he's like, you know what? You're at a level where you can play with us, and I'll tell you where to play. Mm -hmm. So he would like con like do his concert, and then he's yeah. telling me yeah. like where to play with yeah. the, with the with the congas and mm -hmm. whatever I had. But yeah, so I did nine to twelve at Thornley. Mm -hmm. Then I went to Seneca College, and I was really doing like my mom was like, "Why don't f focus on social work?" Mm -hmm. I did it for like about a year and a half, two years, and then I dropped out. Of college. No passion. No passion. I never <laughs> liked it. <laughs> I never like it, mm. but at the end of the day, now looking back at it, I think I made a really good decision. So, mm. 
So what you eventually um, did? You went to yeah. work? Or yeah, you... so I went, went right into the workforce, mm -hmm. making okay. minimum wage. I was working in retail. Mm -hmm. um, I worked my way up in retail until like management. Mm -hmm. I was different stores. So you had Sport Check, Aldo, mm -hmm. Little Burgundy. You had different stores in the malls that I would work at. And I liked it. The money was nice. Mm -hmm. you know, I never have to depend on my mother and my father as well. Still, <laughs> I did. But not to the extent. Yes, yes, did. yes, yes. But at the end of the day, I, I just, the passion for social work for me wasn't there. And it was just really hard. Mm -hmm. Like, you hear these stories that, like, people have been going through just because of, you know, racism or, you know what I mean? So it's like, that's, a lot of that is surrounded in social work. And man, I'm, a, I'm just a jovial, happy person. Mm -hmm. You so know? did you continue your drumming when you went to yeah. into Canada? Yeah. So yeah. I, when I moved 2004, big up Kevin White. Mm -hmm. um, Kevin was, he was there. He's like, hey, my uncle, Uncle Patrick was out. He was the assistant pastor for Faith Sanctuary. Um, some people would know Western Road, um, the old church, but Faith Sanctuary was a new one. And they moved there 2003. Mm -hmm. We migrated 2004. And Kevin was like, hey, your uncle told me that you played drums. He took me to Just Drums, a drumming store in Toronto, uh -huh. and bought me like my congas, my bongas, mm -hmm. my bongos, my, my congas, timbales, bought me everything. I was uh -huh. like, we want you to be a part of the band. Uh -huh. And then from there, like I think because my pastor um, at the time, Pastor Granville McKenzie, uh -huh. he was really into music. Uh -huh. So he just appreciated me playing. Yes. And, um, and everybody just, it, it came in. So I started to my older years when I could go out now and look and listen to music, I started to like go to like jazz clubs and I'm like, bro, this is percussion in a different light mm -hmm. for me because all I really knew was growing up, you listen to Ron Canoli, yes. you listen to Fred Hammond, you mm -hmm. listen to, you know, some of these other art, like Israel and New Breed. Yes. And they had percussion in there, but I just never seen it, Yeah, you know? So being a part of that, I started to notice that there was more to my instrument than what I knew. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So playing in church, the foundation, that was the foundation for me. Listening to like different artists mm -hmm. that had percussion elements in there and also listening to like my favorite percussionists. So I started to like really read about it. I started to really learn about it. Mm -hmm. Started to learn different types of rhythms, different types of genres of percussion. Mm -hmm. So like salsa versus like you know, you had the reggae element. Mm -hmm. So I really, really, really started to like listen and immerse understand and immerse in music, myself yeah. into music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I know you started to play with a band. Tell us how that, that came in. Yeah. Apart so, from the church band. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I, start, I started in church and then started playing in church in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And it was like started to play out as well. Different, uh, like different bands. But then I decided in 2021 to move to Edmonton, Alberta. Um, and if you guys know, Canada is very big. Yes. And this is on the other side of Canada. Yes. So decided to leave, make the big man decision and say, oh, listen, I'm going to move my family over to Edmonton with some friends. Uh -huh. And we moved over there to start a new life. Uh -huh. And I actually moved to Edmonton to really and truly just focus on my career, nine to five. Uh -huh. At the time, I was a global account manager uh -huh. for a company called um, Bowler A. Uh -huh. And at the time, I was like, you know what? I'm going to just focus on my work. And I lock up my stuff in a storage locker in Orangeville. My mother had it. Lock up everything. All the jumps and everything. All the thing. And I was like, yo, I'm done. Don't do that. Yeah, I really, really, <laughs> when I really want to continue. Yeah. You know? But I always looked at my brother who, you know, I, I, I like, I look up to him as a role model uh -huh. and try to, I, I, like, el what's the word? Emulate. Emulate. Yeah. yeah I try to emulate his, uh -huh. what he's doing in his career and try to, you know, just in my little way. Uh -huh. And, you know, I, I went to this gig and my good, good friend, Trey, who I call my younger brother, um, he was playing drums for them. And it's a band called Mela Freak, mm -hmm. Mela Freak, Melanin from Africa. Yeah. And all the guys in the band are international, like students mm -hmm. slash international musicians. Mm -hmm. Not like most of them are full time in music. And Trey was playing for them and they're like, yeah, we're looking at expanding the band, making the band. You know, we love reggae music, they play reggae music. The 55 is one of their original reggae tracks. Mm -hmm. And so Trey was like, bro, my brother play percussion. Mm -hmm. You should Check him out. Check yeah. him out. You yeah. Know? And I remember we all went to the same church, FLC. And so LaShawn, who is the band leader, came to me and was like, yo, would you be cool 
if you want to like if you would want to play with us and i'm uh -huh. like bro yeah, yeah i'll play uh -huh. so like and uh, yeah at the time i was like it was one two three gigs i would go to lana mcquade which is the music store uh -huh. and rent my congas and bongos knowing that my stuff is back yeah. in toronto <laughs> but then it started to get busy yes. so i'm just like looking at it i'm like Yo, I forgot rent again. Yeah. So I remember flying back to Toronto. Get your stuff. And get get my stuff, yeah. I was like, Mom, you need to load up the UPS. Yes. <laughs> I would ship ship everything to 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 Edmonton and I haven't really looked back. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been like literally playing like, we just went to Nigeria mm -hmm. the other day. Um, but we've been playing winning multiple like awards and, mm -hmm. and now we're focusing on doing the album. Mm -hmm. And you know, we've been opening for some really big um artists in canada as well so uh -huh. yeah so what's on the horizon for for music and 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 drumming specifically yeah. what's on the horizon hopefully hopefully to go full-time mm -hmm. hopefully to play um play full-time in music and do it as a career mm -hmm. um and then just creating a legacy mm -hmm. for not just for my family mm -hmm. you know when i look at bob and see what bob marley has done Yes. and created a legacy for his whole children yes like i want to make sure that mellow freak emulates that emulates you know? that so yeah all right switching gears now um and tell us one of the most difficult situation that you had to deal with in your lifetime difficult i would say probably when grandma passed away mm -hmm. you know she was literally the anchor i would say the matriarch of the family um lesty knows because lesty needs to come over definitely all definitely. the time <laughs> You know, we had that's the, Aunt Jenny. Aunt Most Jenny. persons know her as Aunt Jenny, yes. So, you know, when she passed away, I remember going to the funeral service and everybody that came up there said, like everybody in church in Wyman Street, she called for mm -hmm. their birthday. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, yo, I don't know how she did it. Mm -hmm. Everybody, she she would call them mm -hmm. on a daily basis. How old was she when she passed away? You know what? I think she was, I might. Approximately, if you don't yeah, remember, I it. think like maybe like early eighties. Early eighties. Yeah. yeah but you know, you always look at grandma, and you're like, yeah, you, you. I know you're old. Yes. But you don't look. You don't look old. You know, <laughs> like she's not really getting yeah. much older. Yeah, facts. Yeah. It's like she just stay in the vortex. Yes. Like right in that that age, and how I remember, but the the I would say probably when she passed away, I went. I came down to Jamaica for Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. to spend time with her and Verona. So Verona was my was my grandma's caregiver, big mm -hmm. up there. Mm -hmm. um, and she was basically my caregiver. She took care of me from, mm -hmm. from I was born. Mm -hmm. Essentially, that's all I, who I know. I think the first uh, word I said was Veer or Verona. <laughs> <laughs> but I came down to see them for Mother's Day and then um, spent time with them. And then it was just, it was a good time. But then went back up to Canada. Mm -hmm. And I remember um, we got a call. And they said, yo, um, and Jenny and Veer meet in a motor vehicle accident. Mm. And I was like, but at the time, you know, when, when, when sometimes Jamaican settings, them not really have the urgency, you know what yes. they're saying? Yes. So, but it was, we knew it was serious, yeah. but we didn't know, like being in Canada, we didn't know it was serious. So mm -hmm. my mom had to buy like the ticket next day. Mm hmm To go down to Jamaica. We didn't really understand how serious it was until mom went um to 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 the hospital saw her and it was very severe it was very bad uh -huh. and i remember she called us she called us and said i think you guys need to come to jamaica mm -hmm. and i remember going and seeing her at icu and seeing her and it was just like she's like tubes upon tubes okay. connected to her it was yeah it was crazy and then they seen verona in a regular ward like you know, and I was like, yo, it's a bad accident, mm -hmm. you know? So, and then, yeah, we, we, I came down, saw her, saw her and, and just prayed for her and made sure, I saw her, well, she had emergency surgery. And then from emergency surgery, she went to the regular ward. And I remember mom telling me, cause mom being in nursing, mm -hmm. um, she told me, she's like, yeah, I don't think grandma is going to make it. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that hit me, but I still had some faith mm -hmm. that, you know, things were going to turn. Um, but you know, I have to feel like just the, the, the medical aspect or the hospital in Jamaica mm -hmm. wasn't the greatest at the time and the help wasn't the greatest. I feel, I always say if grandma lived in Canada, she pr maybe probably would uh -huh. still be alive. Had access to health yeah, care is, yeah. is, is, is better. Of, yeah, a lot, the, uh, very much so, uh -huh. but it still have its 
pros and cons, you know. Uh -huh. But yeah, so when she, I came back up to Canada, I went back to work and I was working and I remember, you know, we get the updates on a day-to-day -day basis of how she's doing and how Bear is doing. And then I got the call, um, well, I was working and I got a call in work and they're like, Dominic, can you come to the back of the store, please? Dominic, can you come to the back of the store? And I'll never forget. And I looked and I saw Jason in the store. Uh -huh. yeah, and that's when he gave me the news oh, my. that grandma had died. And, you know, I went, I got, I think I grabbed like maybe some boxers and a t-shirt and a shot. And I went right to Grandma Chiki's house. That was her younger sister uh -huh. that I lived with for a couple of years. And I still talk to her every day. She's like a grandma to me. Uh -huh. And went to her and she told me, she's like, listen, like, I'm going to try and fill the void as much as I can. Uh -huh. And then also she told me, she's like, just come and stay with us. Uh -huh. And I stayed with her until we went down to um, Jamaica for the funeral. And it was quick. Actually, I think she died like maybe Monday or like if she died on a Monday, we had the funeral on a Thursday. Uh -huh. Like it was really quick. And uh, we just wanted, like, I think mom, just wanted to, you know, bury her and, and then come back to Canada. So it was, yeah, it was really quick. Uh -huh. yeah. So, um, what was, what is one of the, um, things that you miss most about your grandmother? Jeez, man. Like I, I feel, I think a, a grandma's touch, like grandma Chiki has been there for me as much as she can, uh -huh. but a grandma's touch is like, like none other like her she feel she she would call me every day to just tell me about the weather mm. and just to talk to me and like i learned a lot of things about her um and about life and it was taught to me by 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 her uh -huh. um and i was just me, me even though you know my parents i was really close to my parents but i was really close to my grandma uh -huh. and you know a lot of things that she would do she would she would just be there uh -huh. you know and, and and again like there's nothing like a grand a grandparent touch in my opinion yes and that's why you know i tried to make sure that my kids have that uh -huh. talk to my mom every day uh -huh. and make sure because you know there's things that you learn there's things that you try to you try to to learn on a day-to-day -day basis uh -huh. and they're the ones yes. teaching you and like she was just she was just a good lady like i seen her you know, give people things and, you know, she's been there for people when she didn't even have it. Sure. You know, like, and the testimonies that she has taught me, the willingness or even just, you know, just the, the, she was so dedicated to her. She dedicated her life to like, for Christ, you mm -hmm. know, when she got saved. And that's something that I always look at to say, you know what, if grandma can do it, I can do it. Yes. Or yes. like, you know, and, and like, I, th I always say it and I jokingly say it like Jason, is close to my mom and I was close to my grandma. Uh -huh. So when she passed away, it was like, literally like, it's like a uh -huh. cut. Like a big hole like in your life. a big hole, bro. <laughs> like, I, like up to this day, like I always, I always try to pause and try to just think about her. I always get emotional because uh -huh. I'm just like, she meant so much to me because of the person that she was. And uh -huh. it wasn't just me, uh -huh. like it was all you guys, like the way how she, you know, she was just there for people. Yeah like physically mentally even just like praying for people uh -huh. she tell me testimonies that oh yeah just give my um some money my what well, money that she had to buy groceries uh -huh. she gave it to someone or some uh -huh. and then sister brown or uh -huh. our our auntie jean that passed away recently would come to the house and uh -huh. bring food and she's like that's the god i serve you know uh -huh. so it's like always just looking at her and and like the life that she lived is yeah it's uh yeah I always get it. I always get emotional. I get emotional. Uh, let's change the subject. Yeah. I, can now. <laughs> I hear you're talking about family. I know you have children now. You got married. So tell us about um, how you met your wife and a little bit about your kid. Yeah. So I met my wife in um, in Belleville. Well, we had there's a conference at the UP. Well, the UPC organization mm -hmm. would do in Belleville, which was like I think about two hours from Toronto, mm -hmm. and all the churches would go and attend. So I knew her when I from when I was fourteen. I think I'm more fifteen, uh -huh. and I met her and met her through an awkward <laughs> situation. Uh -huh. But she started, you know, we started talking to each other. From there, we start. I think it was my twenty third birthday, twenty uh third -huh. birthday, or twenty fourth birthday, twenty third. 
and she actually came into my life when my grandma passed away mm -hmm. and you know i was trying to be a, a little player <laughs> but she saw right through it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then um <laughs> and then yeah from there from 2020 from 2013 till now you know we got married in 2017 in jamaica um from 2013 to now we've been together mm -hmm. so it's been years and then in 2020 god bless us with uh twins mm -hmm. london and roman who is a bundle of energy especially uh -huh. roman <laughs> uh, i tell i tell people there's three going on 30. Mm. Yeah, so yeah the god bless us with twins and um we've just been paving the way we as, as i said before we lived in in the gta for quite some time since uh -huh. i moved and we now we're moving. We live in Edmonton now, so uh -huh. you know it's it's been a life life changing. Life has been you know life has been hard. Marriage has been hard, but you know it, the the goal is to always once you come out, you just feel like you know like looking back at it, you're like, yeah, life wasn't like life is hard, but uh -huh. you know we we dealt with it. We come out gold, you know. Yeah. How has it been now being a father now? of twins and they're they are about four years old now right yeah. tell us about that that experience for you yeah it's been you know the first couple of years have been it's been challenging you know being being twins you know me and Brittany, we tried to work as hard as we can uh -huh. you know to create a routine um but yeah it was challenging at first you know what i mean but i know now you know things are starting to stride now there's they can talk have conversations <laughs> full out conversations with each other, uh -huh. with us as well, uh -huh. you know, but at first, you know, just learning to get to that sweet spot, you uh -huh. know, to be being a parent, you know, uh -huh. um, you know, just trying to make sure that they're like, and we're involved as much as we can in their lives, uh -huh. you know, and um, yeah. Okay, tell us a little bit more about your wife. I know I didn't hear you mention the name, so you could mention that as yeah. well. Is she Jamaican or did is she canadian tell yeah. us a little so bit about that jo she's canadian but mm -hmm. jamaican descent i yes. tell her all the time she's not jamaican so. <laughs> <laughs> but she's canadian um with jamaican descent her parents are from black river mm -hmm. um and she's originally from ottawa mm -hmm. um what's yeah, her name her name is Brittany. 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 yeah mm -hmm. I just used the opportunity to give Brittany a, a big up and a, a shout out, um, some appreciation. I let's put it on record. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, big up Brie. Um, you know, she's she she holds on the fort whenever she does as much as she can mm -hmm. as as well to provide for us. You know, even though she works full time, mm -hmm. you know, in a nine to five, mm -hmm. but she also has her own company called mm -hmm. August. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, she's making ladies' lives and what she's doing in her um i would say in their lives as a success so uh -huh. big up yourself uh -huh. big up wifey big up moms mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah all right um switching gears a little bit now tell us a little bit more about your parents um i know you grew up with your your mom mm -hmm. and your dad and your grandma tell us a little bit about some of the things that you learned from like your dad yeah versus what you learned from your mom yeah so you know like I, again it was a polar opposites, mm -hmm. you know, cause you have mom, I, I was born when mom gave her life to Jesus uh -huh. at Wildman Street. Uh -huh. So, you know, you have the polar opposites. So you have church uh -huh. and dad, you have, he's a ragamuffin. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, knowing, you know, you know, yes. dad, he was, but at the end of the day, you know, what I've appreciated and I look back in over the years is that he was very involved. Uh -huh. You know, he made sure that he worked as hard as he could to provide for the family. Uh -huh. Um, you know, it, looking back, I remember when I got, when I got left, when I got uh, moved from school, uh -huh. when I moved from schools and then, you know, it was grade nine, it was the mom said, you know, if you're going to do homeschooling, but you're also, because it's not every day, you're going to go to work with your, your father. Uh -huh. And I seen how hard he worked. So every BMW, Rav, uh -huh. uh, Range Rover, uh -huh. um, anything that was Stewart's at uh -huh. the time, it was KIG uh -huh. or still KIG. Uh -huh. He would be the one licensing. Like um, bringing the the cars into the country, he was the one that made sure that they had license, and uh -huh. you know. But at the end of the day, I had to, I got, I, I got to spend time with him, uh -huh. you know, because at the end of the day, you know, he wasn't a church man per yeah. se, but he loved God, uh -huh. um, and he showed me how how it is to provide for your family. Uh -huh. How, and I feel that's why me and him are close because, uh -huh. you know, I think I get him. <laughs> so, yeah. but that was that was a hard back. I would say worker. He loved uh -huh. he loved the farming. Uh -huh. He did fishery uh -huh. for Gilbert. Um 
and then he did he worked at, at kig uh -huh. um and then so working seeing him and seeing him in daily and spending time with him even at the farm like i loved it yeah yeah so what about mom now mom yeah mom was the polar opposite yes so mom was very like she was she was very i would say she wasn't laid back per uh -huh. se but she was she loved god she loves god uh -huh. she loves to really and truly you know that's her connection uh -huh. and i've seen her dedication to christ uh -huh. over the years but she worked hard as well uh -huh. like for them to drop everything that they had to bring us to canada uh -huh. i'll never I, I don't know how i would repay her you know uh -huh. what i mean definitely gave us a different life than we had in jamaica yes. and you know helped us to kind of focus on our dreams uh -huh. so yeah mom big up yourself you know all right so we're coming to the final stages of the interview now one question i would ask if you could get a chance to talk with your younger self probably in your teenage years what's one message that you'd want to get through to young dominic yeah. back in those days I would, seeing all that you have gone yeah. through in life and you know i would i would tell younger dominic to trust the process mm -hmm. you know at the end of the day god is in control mm -hmm. you know don't don't fret and you know don't 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 feel like he's not listening because mm -hmm. he does listen and just focus on your dreams mm -hmm. you know a lot of people want you to do something but it's what you want to do it's your life mm -hmm. so all right so as we wrap up um just wanted to leave um a word of encouragement for your immediate family um a message for your brother and let's put on record your appreciation sometimes persons don't exactly know how we feel about them yeah. um so i want you to leave one for your brother one for your dad and one for your mom okay all right so you can go in any other and then we'll close okay so i want to say uh big up jay big up jason you know, over the years, I've seen him work as hard as he can to provide for his family. And now he's doing things that, you know, we would dream about as children, mm -hmm. working with the Malis, working with these big gospel uh, uh, artists. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to say, love you, bro. Love you, Natasha. Love you, the kid. Love the kids as well. Um, always looked up to him. Still look up to him now. <laughs> um, dad and mom, you know, you guys are in my heart and I love you guys for yeah i don't my love i can't i don't know if you can really <laughs> describe the love that i have for them <laughs> but big up mom big up dad mm -hmm. um you know me and mom were like they are like this mm -hmm. and dad and i are like really close so mm -hmm. you know over the years i've learned to really um look and try to emulate you know what they have because i you know at the end of the day yeah you know i see your parents argue and stuff but what i learned from my parents is to work hard and always put your trust in 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 jesus and always put your trust just in anything that you do always try to work as hard as you can mm -hmm. yeah. well um thank you dominic for sharing and spending a little time with us and thank you our viewers for tuning in another time for another interesting interview um hearing some of the experiences shared by my brother here dominic so until next time when you join us for another interesting interview with another of our guests just gonna ask you to keep safe yeah man and like and subscribe to the team <laughs> <laughs> all right